Get the uh, YouTube feed started up here. Holy oh, shit. So it looks like we have about everyone here. Uh, is that all right if I go ahead and read the uh, meeting intro here? Yep. We're ready to go. We have room missing one, but we have a quorum, so we can proceed. Okay. Um, uh, the format of this meeting consists of board members and applicants attending a live online Zoom meeting. Looks like we have uh, 11 uh, members and applicants here in the Zoom meeting. Um, for, for applicants, please only speak when the chair indicates it's time to do so. For example, he may ask if anyone is present to speak for an application. In addition, as usual, prior to addressing the board, please state your name, address, and affirm that you will tell the truth. The meeting is also streaming live on the city's YouTube channel. Uh, looks like we have uh, one person viewing right now. Uh, for the public, viewers on YouTube have the ability to type in comments. If you enter in a comment on YouTube, uh, please indicate your name and address. Comments can be entered at any time, but we will be relayed to the board when the chair indicates that it's time to do so during the public hearing portion of an application. Any other comments submitted to, to me prior to tonight's meeting have also been forwarded to the board. Please also be aware there's an approximate 15 second delay between the Zoom meeting and the live stream on YouTube. Um, that's all I have for now, and I'll turn it over to Stuart to uh, begin the meeting. Thank you, Andrew. This is the regularly scheduled October meeting of the Worcester Board of Building and Zoning Appeals. This is a volunteer board of Worcester citizens established to hear requests for variances, appeals, and similar applications as specified in the City of Worcester Planning and Zoning Code. Board members present this evening are Ben Gunn, Greg McElvain, Doug McMillan, Mark Reynolds, and Brad Gowans. My and name Ken is Stuart Suchan. Gibbon. I'm sorry? Ken Suchan is on the telephone joining oh. you. Thank you, Ken. Board member Ken Suchan is also president. <clears throat> My name is Stuart Fitzgibbon, and I am the chairman of this board. Because these hearings are a matter of legal record, the public portion of the meeting is recorded. Therefore, we ask that if and when you speak, please speak loudly and clearly. We also ask that prior to speaking, each speaker gives his or her name, address, and affirmation to tell the truth. Following the meeting, the appellant for each application will receive notification of the board's decision. The applications to be considered tonight are applications BZA 20-24, BZA 20-25, and BZA 20-26. Our first order of business is to call the roll. Um, ben? Here. Greg? Here. Doug? Here. Mark? Here. Brad? Here. And Ken? Here. And I too am here. Our next agenda item is approval of the September 3rd, 2020 meeting minutes. Are there any questions, comments? Concerns. All 
All right, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion for approval. So moved. <clears throat> Which is Brad? Brad. Thank you. Second? Second. Sorry, who was that? Doug. I didn't hear this. Doug. Can't hear me, Doug. McMillan. Thank you, Doug. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. All right, the minutes are approved. Our first application this evening is BZA 20-24, John Barrington requesting a use variance from planning and zoning code section 1109.02 to allow a transitional housing use and an area variance from planning and zoning code section 1115.04a to allow buildings within the side yard setback at 950 and 1000 West Liberty Street in an I-2 general industrial zoning district. Is there someone here to speak on behalf of this application? Don Barrington is here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you uh, give your address and your affirmation, please? John Barrington, 3431 Commerce Parkway, Worcester, Ohio. I affirm to tell the truth. Thank you. Please proceed. The uh, Wayne County Commissioners own a property at 950 West Liberty Street. It is their desire to transfer that property to the Wayne Metropolitan Housing Authority for uh, use as transitional housing, uh, which uh, will assist low income people to uh, have adequate affordable housing. The uh, property presently is in an I-2 zone, so it would need a use variance to allow transitional housing. It also would have a setback problem uh, with the property next door and would need a, a setback variance in order to, uh, to comply with the zoning code. The, um, the, the, Wayne, the Wayne Metropolitan Housing Authority is in the, the uh, business of assisting people with affordable housing. This particular house is a, a very adequate house. There's presently a, a blue uh, rundown residence next to it, which is already owned by the Met Wayne Metropolitan Housing Authority. It's their proposal to take that house down and remove it completely, which is why they acquired that property. <laughs> and that then would, uh, would lend well to the use of the 950 as a uh, transitional housing property. I, I'm aware that some of the, well, at least one of the neighboring people uh, raised concern that uh, the use would uh, greatly affect the value of the nearby properties. And of course, there's no evidence that uh, that's actually true, but I certainly can understand his concern uh, because it is uh, subsidized housing. However, the uh, Wayne, Metro Main, Wayne, Wayne Metropolitan Housing Authority owns a number of properties in the city of Worcester. And I would defy anyone to pick uh, many of those properties out without uh, going to the records to determine who owns them because those properties are all well-kept properties. The uh, people that live there are, uh, are certainly uh, reasonable tenants. If they are problem tenants, then the Metropolitan Housing Authority takes care of that problem in one way or another, uh, sometimes by moving them into different housing. At any rate, there's really, uh, this particular house is a very 
usable, uh, habitable house, it uh, will have some upkeep and uh, improvements made once the transfer is made, but uh, it, it really has no good industrial use. And uh, consequently, uh, it's not a usable property unless it can be used for some kind of housing, which is why we are making that, that request at this time. Are there questions? I want to buy the car. Sorry. What kind of uh, transitional housing is it going to be? How many people will be occupied in, in the house? Is it, uh, it will be a single family house. Okay. And do I understand the two houses to the east are going to be torn down? So there's actually some lot in between the neighbor and the house that you're going to use. That's actually that's correct. Uh, the house next door to us to the to the east is being torn down, and there's also a garage building in there being torn down. Um, and the uh, the neighbor that uh, that is complaining is actually, I believe, then three houses away, at going further east. And actually, we're going to improve the neighborhood rather than detract from the neighborhood. Uh, the, the blue house that uh, is being demolished is certainly an eyesore. And when you say a family, you're talking that the, who, who's the person that usually is coming from the treatment? I'm sorry. You say this is uh, someone has been in treatment and they're going to be then as a family living there. Um, is that what I understood? Really in treatment. Um, so this is low housing. In, uh, right. Uh, people, people who are uh, conceivably at this point uh, living in their cars or whatever because they can't uh, come up with affordable housing uh, will be. Uh, given a place to live. So it won't be an individual for sure, it'd be a family? Or... Yes, it'll be family housing. Okay, thank you. But what's the house currently being used for? It's currently vacant. <clears throat> but, uh, it was rented by the county as a uh, just a rental unit up until a year or two ago. I'm not sure how long ago. And uh, since then it's just been vacant, but it's a, it's a very, it's a, a well constructed house. It would be a real shame to uh, simply take it down when we have a need for uh, affordable housing for people in the city. So I don't want to beat a dead horse, but in the packet we received, we got a letter from the Court of Common Pleas stating that this was going to be used for a youth step-down house and be contracted um, to be supervised for the youth. So did that change I, from the time of the application? To I could be misinformed. I apologize for that. I expected the, uh, the executive director of Wayne Housing uh, to be here. I don't know why he's not. He said he was going to be. But I I can't dispute what the letter says. I am here. So Stan is here. Oh, okay. Stan, what's the, what's the use going to be? Uh, my name is Stan Pop. I'm the uh, director of the Wayne Metropolitan Housing Authority, 345 North Market Street, Worcester. Um, and I affirm to tell the truth. Uh, this this house is actually a, a, a 
a, a joint project with the Family and Children First Council, um, Wayne County Children's Services Board, um, and the um, Wayne County Department of Developmental Disabilities would be used primarily for, <clears throat> for youth uh, coming out of structured um, assistance uh, in preparation for um, foster placement uh, or adoption. Uh, there will be 24-7 um, um, staffing at the house. Uh, it'll have, at, at the maximum, it would house five children at a time. Um, <clears throat> our, and I, I know where Mr. Barrington might have been confused because our, uh, our restriction for that originally, uh, on the condition of the, the county commissioners to give us the house, um, would have been for that project forever. And if that project failed uh, or wasn't funded in the future, that it would revert back to the, to the county. And we said, if we're going to put money into it and renovate the property, uh, we'd want the option to be able to use it as a, a low income rental at some point. Um, but the intent of the property at this point um, would be for the transitional youth for step down um, for, for youth. That's a very helpful clarification. Thank you, Stan. Uh, I, I need a little more clarification. I'm sorry. Sure. On the step step down. So, where are these? Uh, where are the youth coming from? Where are the children coming from? They may be coming from a, a treatment facility, or they may be coming from a an interim foster placement. Um, these would be children that just need. Um, <clears throat> they need some um, evaluation of of um, ability to, uh, to be placed in, in appropriate foster care and so forth. But that's why they call it a step down. It's going from something, um, something more restrictive, um, <clears throat> probably more restrictive um, to, um, to prepare them to go into a general foster placement or adoption opportunities. And Mr. Pop, correct me if I'm wrong in this, but so these would be children who have completed treatment and the new Ohio law that is being enacted um, are trying to prevent children from being housed long-term in residential facilities. So when these children, these children complete treatment at residential placements, um, this will give them the opportunity to show even further that they are ready to step down their level of care to get to a foster home to be ready for adoption. Does that sound accurate? Thank you, Mr. Gowns, that was perfect. And then this will also be an option for respite as far as if other foster homes have uh, children and there's nowhere else that can take them when the foster family may go on vacation or something, the children can uh, be placed here uh, for a short period of time. Is that correct That's as well? Correct. And it would also serve the, um, um, the, the DD population in that, in that um, aspect as well. But there would never be more than five? Correct. And that number of five is determined by the configuration of the house and the space available? Both the configuration of the house and the staffing. And that's set by regulation? It's set by agreement. And it, if it's larger than that, this is, this is not, a, um, it's not a licensed group home. Um, um, so it, it, it can't, it can't exceed that population and, and be functional. There is in, um, the city of Worcester that where these transitional homes are allowed is, or is this, is it always a unique situation? This, this is kind of the first of its kind. Um, <clears throat> and, and the reason and, and in that, the reason for it being that location is that property helpful. was available to us. And I'll just chime in. Uh, you've got our use table up there. So it's a conditional use in R3 and R4, which is multifamily residential and in C3, which is a general commercial district. So that's where that specific use would be permitted.
and this this is short term or what I, am I reading this right one to three months placement generally that would be correct yes so it could go beyond it, that but it could go beyond that if 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 there was a plan in place um it's not it's not um it's it's not a forever home. So, hey, Mr. No. Okay, so just to clarify again, um, that the, the the intended purpose is the transitional housing, and so the application as written. Um, for low income housing would be the fallback position if the group housing or the transitional housing project were to not go forward. Cor correct. And then as long as we had appropriate variance, we would use it as a single family dwelling. <clears throat> and Mr. Pop, just one further question, um, just maybe to appease those who are questioning if it truly will be transitional, the one to three months, these children will be overseen um, by the probate court. So the judge will be ensuring that um, when children need to be found permanency, they're not staying in this facility long-term because the goal is to get them somewhere permanently. Is that correct? That, that's correct. And, um, and Judge Wiles is a partner in this project as well. Um, so the, the, the youth being placed there will will be um, with the knowledge of the court or um, or by order of court. Okay, are there additional questions from members of the board? Well, uh, one question. Um, I know we touched on it at the beginning, but is do you have a history? <laughs> of tracking property values of other properties that you've taken over and have transitioned to some type of low-income housing or transitional housing of property values fluctuating after it's been put into use or do you not have that record? We don't, we don't have that record, but I would, I would uh, venture to say that there isn't a single property that we own that hasn't appreciated as well as the properties surrounding it. Um, we, we have, we also have a, uh, a dozen single family, well, we're single family, family houses around the county and in the city of Worcester that have been used as small group homes for developmental disabilities clients um, for years. And over the years, we've had uh, neighbors who didn't understand the use and, and wanted us zoned out. Um, I can assure you that we are the best neighbors they've ever had. And, uh, and um, not a single place that we have uh, do we get neighbor complaints. Our properties are well kept um, and we manage, we manage the, the properties and the, um, and the tenants in those properties well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Okay, hearing, um, hearing no further questions from the, the board, um, we'll now open the public hearing portion on this application. Um, Andrew, do we have anybody on YouTube? Uh, looks like we have one person uh, watching on YouTube right now. All right, we'll wait a moment for the 15 second delay. And also put up the, the email that was uh, sent to me to forward to the board, um, the adjacent property owner uh, commenting on this application. Doesn't look like we're getting any uh, further comment on uh, YouTube. Okay, thank you, Andrew. 
then in the absence of further comment, I'll close the public hearing and ask if there are any further questions from members of the board or um, does anyone have a motion? I'll make a motion that we vote to approve the request as stated. Um, I guess my only condition is a max maximum occupancy of five residents. Okay, thank you, Greg. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second, I'll second. it. Okay, thank you, Doug. Okay, we have a motion and a second on uh, application BZA 20 to approve as presented with the condition of uh, a maximum of five um, transitional residents. Uh, Greg? Um, I vote to approve it, uh, approve it as requested with that condition. I just think given its location um, beside the uh, industrial uh, properties, that this is a good transition for the property. And I think that the, um, it will be well maintained and an improvement to the neighborhood. Okay, th thank you, Greg. Doug? Uh, I'm gonna agree with what Greg said, but also that they're tearing down and there's some buffer there with a the lot that's um, where those buildings were. I would agree with Greg and everything else and that I'd say yes also. Okay, thank you, Doug. Ben? I'm voting yes for the reasons that were previously stated by my colleagues. Um, I think the programs that, uh, the, uh, that, that have been done in the past, I recall many, many years ago, there was a transitional uh, house for children coming from children's uh, home out in um, the, uh, the, the north, the, the Christian children's home. And it proved uh, worked out very well. It was their last year in high school and they were in a transitional house in um, a really middle-income neighborhood that we approved. Okay, thank you, Ken. Um, ben? So I think as it states in the application, the need of the community and also the letters we received from the Wayne County Commissioners and the Court of Common Pleas, uh, I think this would be a good use. And with the attempt to improve the property, I vote yes because I think it will be a benefit to the neighborhood property value wise, as well as a good use for our youth that need help. All right, thank you, Ben. Brad? Um, I think that, you know, I commend the, the partners for the, that came together for this, uh, to have this vision because this is a need in our community. Um, and I think the need outweighs maybe the, um, the note we got from the resident, uh, his, his point is valid, um, but I think that these community partners have a track record. Um, they're committed to success. Uh, Metropolitan Housing has a track record of doing their very best with their properties. And so um, for those reasons, uh, you know, I'm gonna vote yes uh, on this as well. Okay, thank you, Brad. Mark? I'm also gonna vote yes um, for many of the same reasons stated by my colleagues, uh, primarily, uh, you know, I think it's going to be improvement to the area as the Metropolitan Housing Authority has a track record for keeping their properties nice. And then with the demolition of the rundown property, um, just the removal of that alone will help improve the area. Thank you, Mark. Um, I too will vote yes for um, all of the reasons cited uh, by my colleagues. Um, I too uh, have some experience uh, uh, dealing with the good folks at uh, Wayne Metro and um, their track record is good in the community. Um, and I think the involvement of the probate court and the, um, uh, the county commissioners, um, I, I think that that does work to address the uh, concerns of the resident. So uh, um, Mr. Barrington, your uh, application is approved. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you all for being on the call. Our next applicant, BZA 20-25.
Weaver Custom Homes requesting an area variance from Planning and Zoning Code Section 1113.01E 13C to allow an outdoor storage area within parking setbacks. Section 1113.01E 13D to allow more of the lot utilized for outdoor storage than permitted. And Section 1113.01E 13F to allow the use of gravel for an outdoor storage area at 1801 Eagle Pass in an I-1 limited industrial zoning district. Is there anyone here to speak on behalf of this application? Yes, Merle Stutzman, Weaver Custom Homes, 124 East Liberty. And I swear to tell the truth. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Stutzman. Please go ahead and proceed. Andrew, if you want to slide down to maybe the aerial view from 2004, that picture, maybe we can start from that. So Weavers has been, we've been up in this end of the, this end of town since the late 80s, early 90s. The lot that is highlighted is 1801 Eagle Pass. To the left of that, the other two buildings, the other two closed buildings and all the open buildings to the far left used to be our lumber yard. So we've been in all those buildings over the years. So you can see how hideous it actually looks from the air on the top side of that left side where we had stuff sitting all over the place. And maybe if you scroll down over the next, I think the next one goes to 2006 and then maybe to 2010. 2006 still looks pretty messy there, but if you go to 2010, you can see we built another building on the top left right by the 77.99 to get more of our stuff in and we closed that bottom in uh, when we had our lumber yard to straighten some of that stuff up. Everything from that 7799 to the left is all gravel storage parking at this point. What we are in the midst of is we've closed our lumber yard down. We are in the midst of getting everything onto one lot, um, consolidating it and then selling these other buildings. So we would only maintain the lot that is highlighted. We need to build another building in the back corner of the back right corner of this lot, the way you see it on the on the drawing. Uh, at some point, it's probably two to three years be before we'll do that. Uh, we have fenced this whole um, yard in all the way around this the building, uh, and we put these slats in the fence on the, I don't even know if that's north or which direction, but up where the 336 is and then to the right along the back, it would back up to Western Reserve. So we put a six foot chain link fence up and put the slats in. We put gates in uh, at the end of the buildings uh, so that we can close them. We put automatic closers and everything on it. We, are, we wanna get everything inside the fence uh, from a security standpoint and also from a visual standpoint so it's cleaned up. Uh, so we have a lot of weird stuff. You know, We've got dozers and track hose and that stuff. So putting it on asphalt is gonna rip the asphalt up. We've never done that. I'm not saying we can't do that at some point but I wouldn't want to do anything like that until we get the other building built. So what we're requesting is uh, to put a driveway at the lower end of that building to, to loop in and behind the building to loop out around the top again, and then take some of that and put gravel storage in there for to back our trailers and, and uh, equipment into that yard. That's kind of the crux of everything that is in this uh, variants. We, what we tried to set up with the fence and everything, I know there's one of the variances is, I think, I forget, is it was a 10 feet off the property line for storage. What we did is put the fence two feet off the property line and, and put stone out to the property line underneath the fence so there's not weed eating and stuff to grow up through. And we're putting a matting down underneath any of this that we'll do, the driveway or parking, we're putting a matting down so there's no dirt coming up through the stone. So it's all a gravel base with no, you know, we shouldn't accumulate any mud in there for the most part. So we're trying to be proactive with the maintenance part so it stays nice. We don't have to, you know, weed whack and do all kinds of stuff on the outside of the fence. Uh, and then hopefully long-term, once we get the other building built, we can get all this uh, hard surface or, you know, stone so we don't have any weeds and stuff growing anywhere. The gate you see there that Andrew just pulled up does not have the slats when the picture was taken, did not have the slats in it yet. I think they're in now for the most part. Uh, so that's what you see the gate and then that left side going back and then across the back of it that would back up to Western Reserve. We put the slats in for uh, to, just to make everything look good from Eagle Pass if people drive down the road there and for Western Reserve seen in the back there. 
So I'm open to any questions you guys might have. The, uh, as he flips to this picture, I just think of those two fuel tanks out front. Those, are, those by law have to be inside of the gated area, so we are inside a fenced area. So that's another reason we're fencing all that in. Um, from a fire marshal standpoint, we need to get those inside a fence area so people can't come up and vandalize them. So. The one comment that uh, we got um, on this application was from uh, your neighbors at Western Reserve um, being concerned about um, the dust that's gonna be generated from a gravel lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I did see that attachment. I read that earlier, that email. Uh, so what I would say to that, the, the yard that I pointed out below over the years has been gravel since early nineties. Uh, but I would say that if, if, if a dust becomes a problem uh, and I'm happy to talk to Kevin about it. If he can, if he can alert me to it, if there does become a problem, we do not have a lot of traffic going there. So typically what's going to happen in the morning, the guys are going to go back there and get the trucks and leave uh, and go out and work for the day. Cause we're not bringing lumber and all that stuff in and out. It's primarily our equipment coming and going. Uh, but if, if there's a problem, you know, Kevin could watch it or if we see it's a problem uh, there is different products that you can put on to help, you know, keep the dust down Uh and if it does become a problem, I would definitely want to address it with them or to take care of it so they don't have issues with it. Part of the, the that's going to minimize the, the dust is because of the matting we put down underneath the rock. So there's no dirt to come up through the matting. I mean, obviously, over time, we'd potentially get some some in there off of equipment, but uh, I do not foresee that as being a problem. But if it becomes a problem, we'll take care of it uh, with a uh, chemical you can put down to help mitigate the, the dust. Other so questions from. I was going to say. Sorry. Uh, on your application, I see that when when you, when you were asked about will the property uh, in question yield a reasonable return, or whether there can be any beneficial use of the property without the variance, I see that you stated without the use we cannot stay at this location. Is there a reason why? As I see that you have a paved driveway back there and it is fenced in and stored, so I just wanted to see why the gravel variance would prevent you from staying at the location because i can't park back there in the mud if i don't put gravel down i can't park back there um the other the other yards are going to be gone we won't have right now the equipment was down below on the other buildings and we will no longer have those we're going to be selling those in november I mean, in the past, you could see the pictures straight in past those fuel tanks out at the end of that, that concrete ends before the end of the building. There's gravel down at that end. It's equipment and stuff has been parked at numerous different times throughout the years. It's, there's been a lot of gravel. I mean, even in 2000, what were those earlier pictures, 2004, 2006, uh, there's always been some kind of stuff behind the warehouse on that side in just in the dirt. And there was a gravel driveway back there. Uh, before we pour that concrete back to it. <clears throat> I mean, would it be fair to say that at some point, uh, depending on how your usage evolves over the years, that you might end up having to put a hard surface down further back behind the building? Yes, potentially, yeah. And I guess the other thing that's changed since you've, you know, you've been up there a long time and most of the surrounding property was still a farm field. Yeah. Uh, you've had more development yes. uh, since you've been there. Now you have neighbors that are more worried about the uh, um, gravel driveway. Yeah, and I don't, I, I want to be a good neighbor. I thought what I'm saying. If the dust becomes a problem, I don't know if any of you guys were out at RES at the auctions. They've got an all gravel lot out there. I was out there for an auction the other week. I don't know what it is, but they have some black chemical they sprayed on top of it that just kind of holds it together. So keeps the dust down, uh, which are different things you, that I know you can do. I do not personally, I don't see it, foresee it being a problem. Like I said, there's not heavy traffic going to be in through it. So, but if it does become a problem, I, I am willing to address it if it becomes an issue. Yeah, your example of RES is a good one because I was when all gravel and, and um, 
expecting to be out there driving through a cloud and it hasn't happened. Yeah. But I guess to your point, uh, you know, you all have been, you've been there a long time. And, you know, now that Western Reserve moved out there, uh, we want to make sure that uh, we keep neighbors happy. Sure. And that's why we put the slats in the fence back there right away so that there's not an issue with them as far as seeing stuff. So, yeah, makes sense. How about, how about the trees or the, um, are, are those all going to come down also? The area that we would do now, yeah, there's not, uh, there's a, most of it's small underbrush except for the, I don't know, there's six or eight bigger trees back there. And you, right now you intend to leave those. Is that what I understand? So well, they're, a buff, they're a buffer too from dust. It's my point. Yeah, that back corner would be the one we're, you know, we're proposing about what half or three fourths of this be in either driveway or parking. So, but that back corner would still have some trees. Uh, if you look on the map, uh, the back right corner, the back rock bottom right, if there's lines on that parcel that, that Andrew hit up a little bit ago, kind of depicting where, um, so if you look at this, the one he just pulled up, uh, that that bottom right quarter of the lot would stay, and then some of the trees across the back. <clears throat> For now, the, eventually a building would go about where the mouse is right now, somewhere in there, to back the equip the outdoor the equipment into the building. Okay, thank you. Okay, are there further questions from members of the board? When do you um, anticipate improving that property? And I guess it, you were asking for the use of gravel now so you can put parking in there now and add a building later, is that correct? Correct, yes. Anything further from members of the board? All right, hearing nothing immediately. Um, Andrew will go ahead and open the public hearing uh, portion of this application. Do we have anything on YouTube? Uh, not yet. I'll open, uh, I'll let them know the hearing is open. Okay, thank you. And I'm not seeing any uh, comments coming in. Absent of comments, we will close the public hearing. Uh, any further questions from members of the board? All right, if not, um, does anyone have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve this as presented. Thank you, Brad. Is there a I'll second? second it. Doug. Thank you, Doug. All right, we have a motion by Brad, seconded by Doug to approve as presented. So voting in the affirmative on BZA 20-25, Brad. Uh, I'm gonna vote yes. I think that the requests are reasonable and uh, given the property owner's willingness to uh, combat any issues with dust should they arise, which would appease the one uh, public comment that we got. So I'll vote yes for those reasons. Okay, thank you, Brad. Doug? 
And, and I was got my notes were like what Brad said. I totally agree with Brad, and I'm going to vote yes. Okay, thank you, uh, Ben Gunn. With the steps I've already taken to provide privacy, as well as the willingness to monitor the dust situation and work with their neighbors, I vote to affirm. Okay, thank you, Ben. Greg? Um, I'm sure the applicant is sincere in his uh, uh, comments with regarding controlling the dust in the future, but I'm concerned that he might not be there forever. And if we set the precedent for the gravel driveway, substantial gravel parking, um, that it opens up a can of worms for us that would be hard to control. So I'm going to vote no. Okay, so noted. Thank you, Greg. Uh, let's see, Mark. I'm going to vote yes to approve this. Um, I think they've already taken some steps to help mitigate the dust. I'm sure that the um, the slats and the fencing will help keep some down. And then um, since there won't be too much traffic in and out and delaying <coughs> the um, the material down underneath the gravel, I don't foresee dust being an issue. And um, I'm sure if there is any issues, they'll take care of it as they arise. Okay, thank you, Mark. Ken, Su Chan? I'm going to vote yes, but based primarily on, uh, in, on what other people have said. And also that the, I think it's reasonable to uh, expect a building and, and more hard surfaces within a two or three year period. And I think that it, it's reasonable to ask for this variance um, in that interim. And that, that's why I'm voting yes. Okay, thank you, Ken. Um, I too will vote yes, um, mainly given that this is a, a pretty unique situation that has evolved over time. Um, and it's going to continue to evolve. Um, and so I think that uh, I, I'm very much relying on the uh, commitment of Weaver Construction to uh, do the right thing with regard to its neighbors uh, so that we don't end up in the predicament that uh, my colleague, Mr. McElvain, is, is concerned about. Um, and ag again, it's a unique situation. So I think we'll have some opportunity to control this going forward. So uh, your application is approved. Thank you. And uh, special thanks to you as a board. You know, you guys do all this work and probably a thankless job that you guys deal with on a monthly basis. So thank you for what you do. Thank you. Have a good night. All right, our next application is BZA 20-26. Bridget O'Connor requesting an area variance from Planning and Zoning Code Section 1113.01D3 to allow a detached storage shed in the front yard at 907 North Grant Street in an R2 single family residential zoning district. Is there anyone here to speak on behalf of this application? Hi, I'm Bridget O'Connor at 907 North Grant and I affirm to tell the truth. Thank you. Please proceed. I wanted to also introduce Eric, my husband, who would also like to say a few things, so he's going to introduce himself. Hi. Good evening. I'm Eric Astrakhan, also at 907 North Grant Street, and I affirm to tell the truth. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Please go ahead. Okay, so we're requesting to put an arts and crafts style shed in our front yard. Um, and the reason we would like to put it in the front yard is because we would also like to use it to hide the Kimball trash containers. Um, our setback is a little bit further than everyone else on our block. And we feel that the location of the shed makes it an easy access for us to um, use those trash bins. And we also were considering um, allowing our neighbors to utilize a brand new snowblower that we bought last season 
which we also ensured that no one needed to use because there was no <laughs> snow last season. <laughs> but the idea was that we have some elderly neighbors in our neighborhood. Um, and I thought that snow removal would be really a big deal. And we've talked to several neighbors uh, since we made this application that if the location of the shed was in that location, um, it would be in front of our gating system to our house in the backyard that houses our, our dogs. And this location would allow us to just put a simple um, combination lock on it so that our neighbors would be able to have access to that shed and be able to use the snow blower not only for their own property, but they all agreed that if they were to take it out to use their own, that they would help one of the elderly neighbors and get their properties cleared as well and our sidewalks. So that was a plus for the neighborhood. And if, if I could add maybe, Andrew, if you could show the picture of the shed, the next picture down. Yeah, thank you. So, I think many of you know Bridget from Art Fine Tile. You know that she's going to construct something that is in keeping with our home. You can see the flower box on the front that will match the flower boxes on the front of our home. The side yard is not available to us because it's uh, significantly sloped right there and it's the wettest part of the yard. But this is already the position that we indicated on the plans, the first drawing that Andrew had. The shed would be 60 feet back from the road, which is, as Bridget noted, um, really significantly further back than most of the homes in the area that are typically 40 to 50 feet back. Uh, and there's quite a bit of mature uh, landscaping trees that partially obscure the shed and, um, and a bit of a rise in the front of the property as well that uh, would partially obscure the shed. But what people would be able to see would be the, you know, what the craftsman style, which we believe would be in keeping with the neighborhood. We don't think that this sets uh, a problematic precedent because the other homes aren't set back the same distance and because um, the special conditions that relate to our yard and the location of the shed. So I guess we would like to know if you had any other questions or concerns that you'd like to discuss with us. Well, I guess just to clarify, looking at the picture, it looks like that the neighbor, um, the neighbor on the, I guess it would be the south side of you, which would be closest to the shed. How does their setback of their house compare to the 60 feet um, that you're setting back your shed? So that would be on the north of us. I'm sorry, the shed would be about there. Okay. So it's almost this, it's still within keeping of their side yard. It's not in front of their, their home. Okay. And but it's, it's easy access to our driveway and very close to our side porch. And of course, as noted, off the property line, so sufficiently far off our property line and what Ed has on his side is his driveway and then um, kind of a grassy driveway going down past sort of where that red line is down past his home. Because so, his garage, exactly. right, that's, right. A, that's a driveway between the two. So it's on the driveway line. So, so it, it still is back from his home and pretty much in his side yard. I mean, in our yard, of course, but uh, what would be a side view from his property. Okay, and then I believe you also noted in your application that 
you have the trees along the front of your property line as well that are going to partially screen it from the street. Absolutely. We have a very large um, pin oak and some evergreen uh, uh, spruce and a walnut and quite a few trees in the front. Plus, there is a rise to the, there's an elevation rise from the sidewalk in front of the property. So it comes up about four or five steps. So it's pretty obscured. Yeah, some, some are evergreens and some are hardwoods. Mm -hmm. And obviously since you've talked to your neighbors, presumably this neighbor who's closest to it is one of them. And are they agreeable? Uh, that is our understanding, yes. And we spoke to all of the immediately surrounding neighbors um, uh, about this and, and uh, they were all agreeable. And like the idea, of, which we've expressed before about community use of the snowblower, because when we purchased it, we did have in mind in particular, we've been in this neighborhood of since the 80s. And so we have a close relationship with our more elderly neighbors. You and, can see the trees in that one. Yeah, and we're in our 60s, so, so we, we can sympathize with the need to, for a little bit of help in wintertime and, um, and not to, to have to take the Kimball trash containers into the backyard, for example, to, to hide them. So what you're looking at our house is the one with the shutters. Yep, that one. So you can see the mature trees that are already in our front yard. Plus that's an old picture because we have many more. Yep. You see the rise. we have anything else? I think that they have any questions. Yeah, other questions from members of the board? All right, hearing nothing immediately while we're while we're waiting for the uh, YouTube lag to catch up with us. Andrew, let's go ahead and open the uh, public hearing portion of uh, this application. I'll do that right now. Doesn't look like we're getting any comments for this application either. All right, then let's go ahead and close the public hearing. Um, are there any further questions from members of the board? All right, hearing none, um, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve this application as presented. Thank you, Brad. Is there a second? I'll, se I'll second. Thank you, Mark. All right, voting in the affirmative on BZA 20-26. Brad? Uh, having driven by this property um, and from the pictures we've seen, uh, the, the two main arguments that I thought were the strongest, again, were letters A and D on their review criteria. Uh, special, you know, I, I believe you that the special circumstances exist with the slope and the drainage 
And then if we talk about the essential character of the neighborhood, um, you have great tree coverage and the design of the building will fit your home will fit the neighborhood. Uh, so I don't think we're going to substantially alter that neighborhood. So for those reasons, I'm voting yes. Okay, thank you, Brad. Mark? I'm also gonna vote yes. Um, I do think along with what Brad said in terms of the unique uh, characteristics of the property of the drainage issue on the south side, um, the driveway is kind of unique in that it kind of takes a long route to get to the back of the house and kind of uh, eliminates the entire side yard on the north side of the property to where there's not uh, really any space there to build this. So I think the area they've chose um, is the best use um, and best place for this uh, shed to go. Okay, thank you, Mark. Uh, Greg? I do have some concerns that anybody with a long driveway would want something similar and it creates issues for us in the future. But um, based on the reason cited and that no, the neighbors are in agreement with this change, I'll vote yes. Okay, thank you, Greg. Uh, ben Gunn? With the unique property of the house setting farther back than the others, as long as they can ensure that the shed stays in the side yard of the neighbors, um, I vote yes. Okay, thank you, Ben. Uh, let's see, Ken, <laughs> Suchan? Um, I voted yes for all of the reasons previously mentioned by my colleagues. Okay, thank you, Ken. Doug? Uh, yes, I understand that the, the slope and the drainage is a problem. Um, normally I would agree with Greg. I, I struggle with putting things in the front yard, but when I drove by, I would have had to pull up pretty far in the driveway because of the trees and shrubs to have even seen it was there. I also very much like that they went over the top with design that should it be seen in the winter time or whatever through the trees. Um, it really is very nice. Um, and I think as long as there's trees, you know, screening it, I, I think I'm gonna vote yes. Okay, thank you, Doug. Um, I too am going to vote yes. Um, I think this time I'm gonna um, be like Greg and be a little bit concerned about the potential precedent that we might be setting here. Um, in that, I think since the Kimball bins have come out, I think um, uh, there's a lot of potential for a lot of people who are gonna say, I wanna deal with the inconvenience of these bins. Um, and I don't think we wanna end up having bin containers uh, permanently out lining the streets. That having been said, um, I think that we have seen enough unique circumstances here that this is not, we're not going to have this set of precedent for us um, because of the particular placement of this uh, storage shed, the quality of the shed, the trees, the contour of the land. Um, so I think that we will be safe in not setting a precedent. So. Again, I too will vote yes, and um, your application is approved. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And You're thank welcome. you, thank and, you. and especially thank you to everyone that drove by and had a look to, to appreciate the unique aspects of this particular property and what we were trying to do. So and we thank do you. love our neighborhood and we love our property. So we think it'll be a big improvement. So thanks. All right, good luck. Thank you, thanks. appreciate that. All right, um, Andrew, anything further? From uh, I, I just uh, I, I just had uh, we had some emails uh, the last couple of days uh, setting up a, a special meeting and I really appreciate everyone getting back uh, so quickly. Um, and I'm sure the applicant does as well. Um, so the, the date that was decided was um, October 15th at 6 p.m. For a special meeting. Uh, it'll again be over Zoom and that will be concerning uh, the construction of two single family homes on the uh, former Larwell Trailer Park property. <clears throat> okay, good. Uh, good to have that uh, confirmed and in the record. Um, hey, Andrew, can I just add that I did not... Sorry. 
me interrupt just a second. Andrew, uh, I didn't mean not to respond, but I, I'll, I can be there that day, that time. Okay, great, thanks. Thank you. All right, um, anything further? Uh, nothing on my end. Okay, if, if not, then I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay, there's a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you, gentlemen, all for uh, uh, an expedient evening. See you in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Okay. Thanks again. Bye. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.